weak, and the secondary locking mechanism of the sidebar is regionally coded. What this means is that there's a national level. So if you go into your locksmith and you buy it, and somebody over in California goes in the locksmith and you both happen to buy the national level, well, you actually both have the exact same sidebar. It's just the, the, the primary lock mechanism that's different. The primary lock mechanism is super simple. Um, you know, they'll get down to regional. And then most importantly, and this is why the Schlage Primus should never be used for institutional security, Every lock in your building, every lock in your campus, if you work at a hospital, if you work at a large tech campus, if you work at a, a school, anything like that, if it's Schlage Primus and you have access to one valid key, you can use the sidebar once again, just like a tension wrench, to attack all of the other ones. So I asked some friends to take some pictures of me. Uh, this morning I was just going to talk, uh, talk about the talk, but then I decided I would go for it. Uh, it turns out that these are the photos that I transferred. Uh, so this is me this morning with a Dremel, uh, as you can see. Uh, and then here's another one that I transferred. <laughs> uh, these, are, these are my friends in the front row who actually were taking the photos, but I grabbed the wrong ones and I'm really sorry. But Freak Show was a blast. Okay, uh, so <laughs> this is the correct key inserted, and you can see that the finger pins, uh, you see how it's very even across there? I should have put one with the wrong key in. Uh, that even facing out key pin is what we're trying to reproduce. Here it is cut down. You have the exact same thing, and you have plenty of room to work. And I was terrified to try to pick this on stage, because once again, I've never actually tried this attack. I just know that it's possible. So this morning, I figured I would go for it at like 8 a.m. Uh, so while he was talking about the Master Key stuff, I did pick it on stage. Uh, I know that you can call bullshit on that, so... I think he should do it again Yeah, while exactly. I talk about the yeah, rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but because we only have the five more minutes, I do want us to be able to continue on. So I'm going to pick. He's going to talk. Oh, my last thing. Uh, Schlage LFIC system. So there's the best small format interchangeable core. Schlage, large format interchangeable core. Best, it's for convenience, but it makes it super secure. It's really hard to pick. It's really frustrating for us to try to pick them. Great little pit tumbler locks. Schlage comes along and says, we need something for convenience as well. You can remove the core of your cylinder with your normal user key if you put a dollop of solder on it. Because the master key for that lock, the control key that will pull the core out so you can slap a new one in and rekey it really quickly, it's just cut on what they call a 6.5 control blank. So you add a dollop of solder to your, thank you very much, you add a dollop of solder to your key and you can pull your core out and inspect your core. Being able to directly inspect a master key system on your lock Great knowledge. Okay. Okay, and then there's other stuff. We saw the EVA 3KS earlier that had a profile bar. And what a profile bar is, it's basically a solid bar in the lock. And when you try and tension, turn the lock, that profile bar pushes into the key. And if that, the pattern of cuts, whatever it is, in this case it's these dimples on, on, along the key blade, if that's not the same, the profile bar, profile bar cannot go all the way into the lock and it doesn't clear the plug to be able to rotate. So what's the problem here? Can't we just take a, a Dremel and just cut all of that off so that there's nothing there and there's never a problem with it? Yes. And it works on this lock. It works on the EVA 3K. Open! <laughs> I don't pick high security. This is awesome. You can all do this. And this works on a lot of different locks because these are all passive components. They're not active like the sidebar where we <laughs> need to I'm set so them, happy. right? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so what have we learned? That having locks is great, but we need to consider the security of how we store our keys, how we manufacture our keys, and how we disseminate knowledge and information about our keys. Personally, I think it all should be public to force people to build better key systems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, it, you know, some companies just don't like to do that. And a lot of companies just want to do it their way. And we'll be happy to keep giving talks about how they're doing it wrong. Um, we're going to take questions in, in QA because we only have like two minutes. Yeah. Um, so just resources. Uh, thank you all so much. Uh, I got some stuff up at openlocksport.com. He's got amazing pages. LockWiki. Lockpicking forensics. He's doing work that nobody else is doing in the country right now. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, non destructive entry mag, ndemag.com, and 
I've designed my own line of lockpicks. I'm running a Kickstarter to fund it. If you want lockpicks designed by a guy who's got a black badge right here for picking locks, uh, kickstarter.com slash project slash Skyler, or you can just search Locksport on there because it's the only project. Thank you, everybody. (laughs) Thank you.